All right, Jeremiah. Hi um, hey, yeah, go ahead and uh, I'm not going to read the note here because I don't want to misrepresent what you're saying. So go ahead and introduce your topic for us. Okay, so uh, this is probably the most, uh, the, the least uh, um, uh, interesting topic tonight. But I just wanted okay. to say that um, so the the opioid epidemic is it is a conspiracy, or at least it's the most substantiated conspiracy we've heard tonight. But I wanted to point out that um, it seems to me that one of the uh, people or groups of people who were complicit in it don't seem to be uh, um, being required to, uh, um, they're, they're not being pursued. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't just the drug companies that engaged in a conspiracy to uh, put their own profit ahead of the health of individuals, but it was also anybody who engaged in the distribution, including uh, possibly like pharmacists and doctors. Um, and okay, so, I don't think that's right. I know they're not done yet, but um, it's definitely a conspiracy, right? Can we define, can you define conspiracy for us? And in, in this context, to be clear, right? Well, um, in, in general, it's any time two or more people can uh, plan together to uh, either defraud people um, or break the law. Okay. Or, or, kind of... or hurt people, hurt people or defraud or break the law. So even like scam artists, like on the street or something, I don't know what they would be doing. I can't think of a specific example, but like selling a... fake, fake Rolexes. Yeah. Or MLMs, you know, the, hmm. like, is that a conspiracy? Cause they know that like the people they recruit are never going to make any money, but they tell them that they are. But would you define those kinds of things mm. as conspiracies? I don't, I don't know if you could. So I, I know I could weed out the, the, the person on the street because um, like a scam artist, because they're talk they're, they are targeting an individual or a, or a, an individual group at least. Whereas I would say a conspiracy normally is, is, uh, is more of a function of itself. Like they, they function for their own profit and not necessarily target an individual. Um, of course, I guess a conspiracy could target an individual instead of a, a group, but um, I I would say that that uh, MLMs and pyramid schemes are a type of conspiracy, probably um, a subset. Okay, hmm. just wanted to be clear on what we're what we're exactly talking about here. Like, so you don't think it's like the government was working with a bunch of doctors to make uh, a lot of the American public addicted to opioids, or you think it was like a government conspiracy or like what kind it was like, are well, there people I don't think that, that, sorry, go ahead. I don't think, um, I don't, I don't know of any time that I could say, the government did X or the government did Y. So I don't, I don't like that term. Um, it's just too large an institution to, to blame or point out or make claims specifically about. But I, I could say the FDA uh, overlooked it. There may be uh, hmm. people inside it who were complicit. I don't think the entire uh, FDA um, is to blame, but I, somehow I doubt that, they didn't see this coming um, at all. The question is, is did they act as soon as they could have? Um, and what level uh, they could have acted at? Uh, what time, right. uh, how soon, and how effectively? So one of the things that I, I look for when assessing whether or not something is a conspiracy is if there is um, either a, a sole person or a... Uh, a small ruling group that's like kind of calling the shots. Um, just just to kind of connect the dots here, are you saying that the FDA person is in league with the person who's you know pushing the doctors to sell it? Like who who is pulling the strings here in in your mind? I, I would um, I would say that uh, the the drug manufacturers are the puppet masters. They, um, the drugs originate with them, the opioids, but they can't get them to the customers without uh, people downstream. 
and when they right well i mean they can't in, they can't just sell it over the counter yeah they need the the prescription right. network to distribute it yeah right but when they engage in behaviors that encourage uh anyone downstream uh to to um facilitate the um the the patients uh taking these drugs for any reason other than their own personal health right or particularly to enrich others then that violates the entire purpose of health care and is in fact engaging in you know for profit activity at the expense well wait the health care even if it's just a possible expense we're we're talking about America, right? That, yes, because that's where the America, that's where the and I have very okay. little Well the healthcare that and I'm not I'm not justifying this. I'm not saying this is how I want it to be, but right now the healthcare system is a for profit industry. Um, a lot of things that you're describing could also be explained through the profit motive, um, in regard to opioid addiction and distribution. Um, I would not Personally, because I, because again, I think I think we're a lot more in agreement than we were when I read the note. That's why I wanted you to explain it um, before I made any assumptions. But um, I just I don't see it as a as a top down conspiracy. I see it as everybody wants a bigger piece of the pie, so they're all kind of working together without being motivated to by an outside source because the profit motive is what's motivating them to do this. Does that does that make sense? How I've explained it. Kind of, except that if you, if you look at individuals in the healthcare in any healthcare field, pharmace, uh, uh, private pharmacies, hospital pharmacies, the doctors right. administering the prescriptions and the the drug producers, mm -hmm. um, uh, there there's a lot more evidence that I have seen just recently, and I happen to have uh, a very good friend who who um, has uh, a lot of education in the the ins and outs of this and um there there were uh doctors who came out of retirement for the sole purpose of running um uh pill clinics where they where they just operated on a cash basis um, right they, they used their license million. yeah they used their license to open the clinic and then there might be other doctors working there but they're doing it under the license of the one person right exactly kinda... yeah That's yeah no I, I know exactly what you're talking about but it's not but it's not like the drug manufacturers didn't know that was going on or couldn't know. And now there are, it is right. possible that some doctors unknowingly participated, right? It's not like a pharmacist who, who happened to give the same person three different prescriptions for the same drug when they didn't need it was necessarily a part, just mm -hmm. like in, in MLMs, well, not because all it's people in the MLM have the intention of screwing people over for their own profit. Right, right, exactly. Okay. No, that's a great point because the person the person at the bottom level selling the skincare product, I mean, yeah, they want to make money, but they also, you know, they probably enjoy talking about the skincare product whether or not, you know, they're they're selling it. Um Wait, whereas they're the, like the, a victim that victimizes other victims. Kind of Oh, no, I don't want to get off topic. But you're right. Like the cycle like of abuse. What, yeah, the the lines are blurred with MLMs because it's like that it's predatory when you're at the bottom, you're a victim. And then at what point when you work your way up the chain, does the victim become the uh, I don't want to say abuser. There's a better word for right. it, like um, what, complicit, what complicit word? in the yes. abuse, maybe mm -hmm. yeah. or complicit and, in the in the execution of the abuse. Yeah, and I wanted to ask too, like, what differentiates someone from being a puppet master from someone just being greedy? I feel like you kind of asked a similar question earlier, but like, how do we know that someone's being a puppet master instead of just being greedy and being like, well, this works in my favor, I'm going to keep this money? It, it's, I don't think that there's a black and white answer to that, but it's certainly um, confusing. Uh, but I would say that obviously when you when you look at uh the places that were operating on cash basis those are in the in the red they're definitely uh bad things that had had no intent of helping anyone but just make money and mm -hmm. i would also say that's probably another red flag is when people put profit over the patient the the profit part is supposed to come because you help people not at the expense of the patient 
and uh, the drug companies were specifically complicit in that they were offering kickbacks, as in the more you prescribe, yeah. the more uh, benefits you have. Oh, um, absolutely. Rewards or, or and that is absolutely even if it was informal and not technically a violation, like they didn't they didn't qualify for legal action in some cases. That still doesn't make it ethical. And so I don't think that patients, uh, I don't think doctors should be able to benefit from the amount of. I don't think doctors should be able to to receive compensation directly from. Uh, the drug manufacturers based on anything other than than outcomes right well, like yeah we're like i agree with you 100 percent on that there they yeah. yeah they shouldn't be in, incentivized by by money for sure they doctors should be not given should not be given money from dr drug companies no if I can, if I can chime Remember. in with a quick little anecdote, um, just in an affirmation of what you were saying about pharmacy companies, um, I used to manage a restaurant uh, back when I lived in New Mexico, which I alluded to earlier, um, and we had a, a catering operation, and I was in charge of the marketing, and then eventually the entire front of house, including catering. And uh, where this is going is, um, I, we had uh, so many pharmacy clients. Like, oh my gosh, our farmer reps were our best clients they would open up a rewards account like with um, the restaurant and then that account would accrue points from the money they were spending from their personal business. So not only were they getting kickbacks like a free lunch when they delivered the catering, they were also getting a free lunch off of that free lunch. And then meanwhile, the hospitals, the ones who were receiving this, you know, they were seeing this farmer rep as their best friend. And meanwhile, they're, the farmer rep is there slinging drugs. They're literally handing out free samples and of sometimes of like new products and all sorts of branded um, uh, merchandise, you know, everything from pens to clipboards and all that. And it's it's the cash flow, man. It's it, it's it's a vicious cycle. It just keeps circulating between the the hospitals, the farmer reps. Um, I, I just I wouldn't personally brand it as a conspiracy for to me. It just it seems greedy. Can I can I uh, add an anecdote to that? Oh, um, go ahead. <laughs> that uh, a little. So, uh, my friend had had to uh, pointed out to me that the patients are still suffering from this, right? And they're not suffering yeah. in the ways that 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 are always obvious. Like um, a long time ago, I worked for a, a major retailer. Uh, well, a long time ago, it was uh, 2006, right? Um, mm -hmm. It was after. Um, well, I can't remember the year, but it was after Hurricane Katrina hit uh, Louisiana. Um, and we went out there and we were busting our butts trying to get products to customers to get their life back together. And, um, I, I aggravated a shoulder injury, um, and it was absolutely excruciating. Um, I, I, I didn't sleep after the second night of no sleep because I was sitting upright in a chair. Um, and if I'm, I mean, even if I didn't move, I would get stabbing pains in my neck and shoulder like mm -hmm. i would prefer to be hit in the head with a shovel over ow <laughs> feeling this pain um, that sounds I was, terrible uh, i was suicidal um for days uh and I, I went to the emergency room in louisiana and um you know i hadn't slept in, in two nights i was extremely fatigued and in absolute agony the doctor asked me to rate my pain on a one a scale of one to ten. I think I said a twenty seven. Um, <laughs> and I remember shaking and I was cold because I couldn't eat. My stomach was uh, just turning in a knot because I was in such pain. And he gave me ibuprofen prescription ibuprofen, mm -hmm. a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And I went back to the hotel and and took um, between then. And the next night, I uh, I took the whole bottle. <laughs> and it was oh damn! It's supposed to be a week. A week yeah, supply. Yeah, and, uh, mm -hmm. that's a funny, little too much. But you know, I, I could have yeah. died, and I wasn't trying to kill myself. Mm -hmm. I was trying to stop the pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, like now, and that's and that's the thing is, people will after, pay anything after, to stop the pain. You know, including yeah. um, including uh. Uh, potentially taking a drug that you know maybe they shouldn't be taking so much of and again as prescribed by a doctor um i don't want to come off as saying question your doctor's prescriptions but at the same time 
uh, make sure that your medical treatment is actually helping you. Um, you know, that's that's the that's the advice that I can I feel qualified to give, I guess. But I always say talk to your doctor. And if you don't think your doctor is giving you good advice, yeah. find a different doctor. Um, but never try to be your own doctor because that that doesn't work. Not even doctors are allowed to do that. No, no, no. I mean, I was I didn't I didn't even know at the time that taking too much ibuprofen was dangerous. I just wanted yeah. the pain to stop and it well, wouldn't. And too much of anything can be get, uh, better treatment in, in a few days after I returned home. But the fact remains that, or, or in my opinion, I think there are a lot of people who are going to get away with it. And those people, the most people who are most likely to get away with it are the, the, the lower level uh, or mid-level, I should say. People who made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars Billions. Um, in these uh, quote-unquote pain clinics and, yeah. and doctors who, who were prescribing the most and, and knew it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing I uh, statistics that I don't know how to to hold them accountable, but I hope that we can find a way. Well, I think I think it's got to be a um, an assessment of how we handle healthcare in this country. I don't, I don't think that we can weed out the individual offenders so easily. It's it's got to be a, um, a kind of a more systemic change. But anyway, um, that being said, uh, we're actually a lot more in agreement than I thought we'd be, Jeremiah. So that was a, a pleasant direction for this call. Um, again, I, I will dispute the use of the word conspiracy, but I absolutely believe that the opi opioid epidemic uh, was encouraged by people who knew exactly how bad it was. Um, and if that's a conspiracy to you, then it's a conspiracy. Uh, but again, thank you so much for calling well, in. We are technically. Oh, sorry, we'll, we'll give you one, about one fifty. Thing. Yeah. Go, go ahead. You can close us out. Just just because I'm so argumentative, I have to point out that opioid manufacturer Purdue Pharma LP pled guilty uh, in in November of 2020 to conspiracies they did. to defraud the United States and, and violate the anti-kickback statute. So it is by hey, definition oh. a conspiracy. Legally. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know that that was exactly how that uh, case was worded. I, I knew they were found guilty of something. I, I didn't follow up on the details. Well, I might be eating my words here. They pled guilty. Um, gotcha. They pled, yeah, yeah, yeah. They pled guilty. They weren't. Or pled guilty. Right, right, right. All right. Yeah, well, once, thank you again, once, Jeremiah. Uh, oh, go ahead. Once, oh, I was just going to say to our caller, once uh, conspiracy was defined, I was more on board as well. Because it's like when people start saying conspiracy theory, it's like a... I don't know if it's a red flag that goes off for me, but at least like a yellow one, like, okay, what are we talking about here? So um, once we got that defined, I think we were all pretty much on the same page. Um, okay, I'm going to read. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you so much for calling. Yeah, thank you, Jeremiah. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.